Where's that picture of? Where's that? On the screen. So somebody just puts up a random picture without knowing where it is? Roxanne probably knows. I don't, I don't think that's Israel unless it's... Doesn't look Galilee-ish, but we'll find out. She'll be in a minute. How you guys doing? Me? How much time do you have? Well, we are right smack in the middle, really. It's Tishrei 8. We're right smack in the middle of the full feast. And obviously the feasts, especially in the fall, are prophetic. They're all prophetic, actually. Um, But obviously it points to the second coming, so I think it's only appropriate that we read a psalm, a prophetic psalm, about the second coming. So if you got your Bibles or your gizmos, whatever they're called, um, Psalm 98 is what we're reading from. And this is... uh, this is really about the final deliverance, for, for, especially for Israel. You know, the, the whole second coming is really, has just about everything to do with Israel. It's, it's amazing to me. I try not to push it here because I don't want to make it about that. But it's amazing to, to how much of the prophetic time clock points to Israel. And Israel is nowhere to be found in the church. It, it's really, when you think about it, it's a little bizarre. Because, you know, he's coming back to fight for Israel. And he's going to deliver Israel. And he's going to pour out on Israel the waters of forgiveness. Zechariah 13. He's going to establish his kingdom in Israel. He's coming back once again as the king of Israel. It's, you know, I don't push it here because I'm not that guy. I don't push wearing talits. I don't push any of it. Because I just feel like that's your prerogative. I just don't want to be that person. I, I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to teach and share what I hope God gives me. But after going to so many churches, it's just amazing. You know, I was speaking to a pastor this week, and he was trying to ask me what the difference is, how I see it. And I said, listen, you know, the church absolutely has Jesus, which is the most important thing. They just don't have a Jewish Jesus. I'm not saying they have a different Messiah, it's just they have a different culture of their Messiah. And I think if Messiah came back, I I, I think if he was being honest, which he would, he would visit some of these places and just say, how did you vacuum out everything Judeo from Christianity? It's totally vacuumed out. And of course, man didn't do it on his own, it was the enemy. The enemy wanted to remove everything Jewish from the faith because he knows that the more that he hears in his ear from a Jew, Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai, that's one more Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai to the coming of Messiah. And the second coming is his second going. And he likes what he does. He loves to rob, kill, and destroy. He really does. You know, there's sadistic people out there who love inflicting pain. He's, he's the sadistic of all sadistics. And he loves inflicting pain. He loves saying when you're hurt. He loves seeing disease. He loves seeing abuse. He loves sex trafficking. Loves. I know it's hard for you to imagine, but that's who the enemy is. And he loves what he's doing. And when the Messiah comes back, he's chained and he can't do what he used to do for a thousand years. And he doesn't want to stop doing what he's doing. Just like a lot of us don't want to stop doing what we're doing. That's why it's so hard for us to change. So I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm one of these Messianic Jews who don't, you know, attack the church. I'm not a Hebrew roots person. I just think, I don't think they're poison. I think they're operating from a place of unmessiah like nature. They're just on the attack. Their MO is to attack. Like they're up here attacking the church. What, what are you attacking the church for? What do you get out of that? You, you think Yeshua praises that in you? Don't be a weed whacker, knucklehead. Be a seed sower. Sow the seeds of love and grace and mercy. 
And why don't you get out there instead of attacking your Christian brothers and sisters, why don't you attack the lost and see if you can bring them to the fold? I'm telling you, evangelism is extinct. As extinct as the dodo bird. Christians just don't do it anymore. I don't, I'm not sure why. I know it's not easy. I know it's not. It's not. It's not easy for me. And sometimes, you know, you have a weird approach and the person sees, he just feels, oh, this is weird. And it doesn't always work out. Nobody does it perfectly, but that should not stop you from talking about your Lord and Savior. And it should not stop you about talking about your Heavenly Father. It's the only thing in the world that has no strings attached. Every one of you in business have strings attached. Whether you'll accept that or not, no, I'm a Christian businessman. Bull crap. You're making money, and when you take somebody out to lunch, there's a string attached. When you share the gospel, there are no strings attached. Where else in the world is somebody going to share with you, listen to your stupid jokes, help you move your furniture, cry for you before the Lord just to see you get saved? That's the heart. Every single solitary believer should have that heart. They tell me, Rabbi, you really have a heart for the lost, and you don't? I'm sorry, are we not both believers? Anyway, sorry, but I, I got to tell you, <laughs> ah, I don't care about the stupid message or the music. Listen, I watched the news this week for the first time in years and years and years. I don't know how it came on my screen, but I got live news from NBC. And I sat for an hour and I cried. I was watching old ladies getting pulled down. I was watching them getting punched in major cities. Punched not by people like you, but by people who know how to punch. I watched guys at sporting events get punched. One guy died at the Buffalo Bills game. A guy punched him twice. You know how, how good of a punch you have to be to kill somebody with two punches? These are guys that are trained. There's the level of violence out there and lawlessness is something I never saw coming. And I cried. And the next day I said to the Lord, if there's so many Christians, according to the numbers, and there's so many conservative people still in small town America, Lord, how is this happening? How is this happening? You know what he said? Because all they do is talk. I never listen to talk radio in my life. I'm sure some of you do. I don't know why. They're just talking. They're talking and they're getting you to listen and they're getting you to subscribe. And then through their subscribers, if they have a million viewers, then they get advertisers. And they're talking. Making 50 grand a month talking. Talk is cheap. Stop talking to each other. I'm sorry? Well, maybe so, but maybe you need to do more good things and not worry about what they report. Store up treasures in heaven. Get out there, it, get out there and, and share the gospel. Help a poor or an orphan. Just do something. Mentor a kid in a bad neighborhood. I don't know. I don't know. Help an old lady who's just shut in. I don't know. But... Do something for God's sakes, for God's sakes. And if you're doing it and I'm ranting and raving, then forgive me. Take care of your family, but if that's where it stops, it's not impressive. Sorry, but it was really frustrating. And that's when I sent out that note about the book. I wrote a book to save souls. God targeted five people this week for me. Five, targeted, the Holy Spirit, not your target, not thro randomly throwing them out, targeted. One guy had to go to a chiropractic office, one guy had to go to a gym, one guy had to go to a barber shop. And I went, and I pulled them aside, and this is my approach. Listen, I don't even tell them I wrote the book. I don't tell them I'm a pastor, who cares? I don't invite them to Beth Yeshua, I never invited anybody to Beth Yeshua. I said, listen. For some reason, God has put you on my heart. You might think that's weird. Maybe so. 
but nevertheless, that's what's going on. And I'm worried about you. And I know that's weird. And then sometimes I'll start crying because I will. I say, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about your eternal destiny. I really am. And I'm sure people have shared with you before. And if I start sharing with you, you're going to listen. And you might go, oh God, how long do I have to listen to this? And I love God way too much for you to have that attitude. I just do. So there's a little book, 66 pages. You know what it is? You know how long it takes a person to read 40 pages, average person, an hour? It's a Netflix movie. How many Netflix movies did you see this week? How many stupid websites did you go to? How long did it take you to save $4 on that pair of shoes? So I said, please, would you read this book? And just get back to me. You don't have to read it tonight, next week. Just get back to me. And if you think it's crap, it's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I have a really thick skin. And I begged you guys. I begged you. I told you I'd give you free copies. Some guy bought, some guy sent a check from Jersey for 100 copies. So you know where they are? Pulaski Prison. Who, are 100 women going to get saved from it? Maybe. Maybe 10. I don't care. It's just a way to get out the gospel. I understand it's difficult. I'm just a big mouth Jew. It's not difficult for me as much, but it's still weird. It's still uncomfortable. I know. So we have a tool. Use it. If you don't have the $7.99, it's free. I'm, is there anybody here from Kennesaw area? Nobody? Okay. Because somebody wants 250 and I don't want them to buy them on Amazon. I'm just going to give them to them. And I was going to give them to you, and you can meet with that individual and get them to them. Just get them out there. Gary, Mon what's that? Okay, I'll, I'll get them to you. Gary Montgomery, you know Gary Montgomery? He's out with surgery. That nut, he was the, what, 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 Allman Brothers, and who was the other group, that other Southern Rock group? Marshall Tucker. He, he's partied with Tina Turner. He's partied with all of them. You know who he gave out to? Tom Petty's drummer this week. Two witches. You know, there's legitimate witches who will tell you I'm a witch. So he's a nut, right? He's a weirdo. Everybody thinks he's a weirdo. Meanwhile, he's out there sharing the Lord with everybody. Yes. Nice weirdo, huh? Maybe, maybe he's that weirdo that God wants him to be. Remember God said be peculiar? Yes. All right, well... I just figured I'd get that out just in case my aneurysm bursts in about the next 10 minutes. I, I got out what's important. Okay. This psalm is about the second coming. It's, it's very, very, very exciting. And it says, sing a new song to Adonai because he has done wonders. What wonders? He's come and put down the enemies and things are going to start to spiral up for the very first time since the fall in the garden. That's the wonder. His right hand, why his right hand? Why not his left hand? Why not say, say his hand? His hand has done his holy hand. Why his right hand? Because everywhere in the Bible, the right hand is a place of power. Psalm 89, 13, it's a place of power. Psalm 26, it's a place of safety. Psalm 80, 17, it's favor. That's why it's right hand. That's why Yeshua sits at the right hand of God. Adonai has made known his victory revealed his vindication in full of the nations, remembering his grace and faithfulness to the house of Israel. His grace and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the Gentile nations that will oppose her in the end days, they're seeing this Messiah come, and he's coming to kick the snot out of all of Israel's enemies. How could you be an enemy to Israel or be neutral when Jesus is crazy about her? Whew. It's like, phew. And it's not just some obscure predestination passage in Romans 8. It's all over the Bible. It's thread all over the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, it's thread all the way through. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. <laughs> all her enemies. He says, shout for joy to Adonai all the earth. Break forth. This is, this is the jubilation of all jubilations. All creation is deliriously happy. Creation. Remember Yeshua said, Luke 19.10, hey man, if you don't 
get happy. The rocks will get happy. The rocks, inanimate creation. He says, sing praises to Adonai with the harp, with melodious music, not just music, special music. They're singing the song. It's this new song. It's the song of redemption, Revelation 14, 3. It says, with trumpets and the sound of the shofar. Blast it. Why do we blast the shofar? Because we're coronating the king of all kings. That's what the shofar is used for, biblically speaking. He says, let the sea roar. The sea's going nuts. Everything in it. The fish, the fish are dancing. The world and those living in it. Deliriously happy. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy before Adonai. I got news for you. He might not be coming back this afternoon, but today you're before Adonai. Make no mistake. This isn't the only house, but this is one of them, and it's legit. And he's here. And you've come before him. For he has come to judge the earth. No baby in the manger. No train going around a tree. Uh Uh-uh. No little donkey. War horse. That's why if you care about your family, friends, or your enemies, he's coming back to judge. I don't evangelize to put a notch in my belt. Oh, three people got saved. Who cares about numbers? People, souls. He will judge the world rightly. And the people fairly. He's right and he's just. Make no mistake. He gives chance after chance after chance after chance. Every single solitary soul in this building blew it this week. Some of you blew it this morning. Chance after chance after chance after chance. You won't get that from no one. That's why it's the great and terrible day of the Lord. For some of us, it's going to be great. For others, it's going to be terrible. He is coming back to give this poor, sick, sobbing world a reign of rightness and equity. Somebody in this house say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry about the tirade, but Just, just, I, I, look, I don't, I'm probably the only person in the South that doesn't know nothing about SEC football, and I'm fine with it. But I do know this. Put together a team and don't have a coach. See how hard they practice and see how well they do. You need a coach. Are you a parent? You're a coach. Are you an employer? You're a coach. Are you a believer? You're a coach. I'm... I know it seems like I'm being pushy, and I know there's plenty of places where they won't push you. In fact, you don't even have to do anything. There's such a big staff, you don't have to do nothing. You just come, you know, go to the coffee shop, you know what I mean? The golf cart will pick you up. Afterward, you can go to the gym or the bookstore, grab a sandwich. It's really beautiful. It's just beautiful. And you won't hear this, because if they hear this, they'll run. I'm not afraid if you run. Gideon started with how many people? No, that's what he ended with. How many did he start with? How many? Nobody knows? I bet you know your portfolio. Bet you know that to the penny. How many did he lose right away? 22,000. He had 32,000. 
against the Midianites, a well-schooled, lubed army, and he lost them right away. God said, those that want to go home, just ask them if they want to go home. That's God's mentality. We don't need lukewarm people, God feels like. They just get in the way. We don't need complainers. We don't need divisive people. We don't need people that don't want to be here. They just mess it up. They're a spiritual cancer. So God's like, send them home. Gideon, and Gideon's like, dang, what? And he goes, okay, anybody wants to go home? He's hoping two or three. 22,000. 10,000. Then God tells him what? Go down to the river. Those that lallygag and go down and, and, you know, take their time, send them home. How many? How many lallygag and take their time? 9,700. Then he's down to 300 against an army. And he's like, this is ridiculous, God. He goes, listen, I don't want to do this, but there's no way out. What about weapons? Shofars. <laughs> and some old clay lamps. Good. What was the message? He doesn't want quantity. He wants quality. If I toned it down and I became that funny guy who edited everything I said and didn't offend anybody, no blacks, no whites, no heterosexuals, no homosexuals, no Republicans, no Democrats, and I checked every... This place would be packed. We'd have to build. And I could come here and go, look at this. We need a balcony. I'm good. It's not God's MO. It's not that he wants to get rid of people. But people sometimes get in the way of the way. They just stand around and tell you all the things that's wrong. And why this can't work. Well, you know, and I'm like, you know, you know, you get, get out. Get out of the way. I don't know, somewhere I read all things are possible with God. I, is that true? Maybe it's not, you know. Maybe that was the old God. The new God is now we got to come up with marketing schemes. By the same token, you don't want marketing schemes? You got to market. Get your butt out there and market the Lord. Sit on social media and argue about presidents. Who the heck's doing that? Huh? I don't know. You? They don't know you exist. You haven't been here in a while, pal. I'm always on a roll. <laughs> Let me roll. And there are people that will get offended by me, and I'm only saying what you're thinking. So get off it. This is a beautiful place. And I've been honored to lead this place. Honored. I've met the excellent of the earth here in this place. The excellent. But God said, if you don't push, God's pushy. He doesn't suggest things. He commands things. He's a little pushy, isn't he? And his shoe was a bit sarcastic, wasn't he? He was a New York Jew, but he was a Nazareth Jew. <laughs> Nazareth was the hood. It was the projects of Israel. I don't know if you know that. Why do you think they said, what good could come out of the projects of Israel? And he said, how do you see the, the speck? You, you have incredible vision. You see a speck in your brother's eye when you got a dang log in yours. He didn't say you shouldn't see the speck. He just said, remove the log first. You'll see the speck a lot better. If you checked your log at the door, don't pick it back up when you leave. <sighs> Heavenly Father, I'm terribly sorry. 
and and I know that I'm not really normal and in some ways that's probably good and in other ways it's not so good I love these people not as much as you do they're a blessing to me and my family they're precious and many of them help keep us in the game I don't want to hurt them and I don't want to hurt myself and I definitely don't want to tarnish your exceptional reputation and renown changes for the better and help us be bold and zealous for your great name I pray in the name of your son Yeshua Amen. Shabbat Shalom, guys.